All right, guys, welcome to our tips number 62. And we're going to be working on improving your storytelling. So we're going to take this plot here, and this is from a company called Fidelity. They're huge in the financial uh, space. And they, and traditionally, companies like to put these plots out here like this, and they're really tough to read. So you can see here that uh, it's got percentages of the stocks, and these are these different sectors, and we're trying to understand the performance. But it's just green and red, and it's very tough to tell which where to put your money. So instead of using this plot, we have a different type of plot that can really help us explain the story and show investors or whoever your audience is where they should be making decisions. And in this case, where they should be putting their money. Um, so you can see very easily from this plot that we're going to make using funky heat maps that information technology is the sector. It's the hottest sector over the medium term and over the past three to 10 years long term. And if I go back over to this plot, it's very tough to tell that. I have to like really hone in here and I can see over 10 years is up 480%. All right, to get started here, do a git pull and that's gonna load in all the libraries that you see here. We see a bunch of different folders and we're gonna be working out of 062 funky heat maps. So click on that. I'm gonna be uh, working out of the 062 funky heat maps.r file. That's what I have open over here. Uh, if you wanna open up the outline, you can see it right here. Um, the data set is the sector performance.csv. That's the data set from the fidelity plot. And you can see the fidelity plot in here as well. All right, so let's get started. The, um, oh, and by the way, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you sign up for the weekly R tips. This is how you get access to the code base. Uh, you just go to this link, the links are in the video notes. Uh, and our goal here is to improve the storytelling of complex financial plots, but it's basically just to help you use this funky heat maps library to improve your storytelling. So when you go in and have to talk with executives and have to create a presentation, it makes them super easy to, to convince them and show them your point. That's with, uh, this plot here. Okay. So that's what we're going to be making. Control and enter. I'm going to load up tidyverse and funky heat map. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to load it in the data set. This is my sector performance tibble. That's just opening up this CSV file into the R programming language. Okay. Uh, first thing. So this is what that data set looks like. And um, it, so I have the sector name in here. I've got the percentage changes and this is in percentages. And we, we want to make something that looks like this. Now we're going to first get started and make a basic funky heat map. So that's what uh, this awesome package. Um, so what you want to do, you want to take that data set and you're going to have like an ID call. And this is uh, all of the sectors here. So that we're going to rename that column to ID. So hit control and enter. It now is ID. And the other columns can pretty much stay the same. Uh, you can actually just pipe it. Once you do that, you can just pipe it right into funky heat map. You're going to get some like warnings and, or some information here, uh, saying that it doesn't have column info and all that sort of thing. And right off the bat, we're actually able to get some pretty decent results. So you can see here, you've got the ID column and you've got, uh, it, and it shows you here, these bigger boxes are where your highest percentage percentage gainers are. So information technology, you can see over one month, three month, year to date, three year, five year, 10 year, all the years, basically, uh, information technology has been kicking butt. Uh, but you can see over the comparable time frame S&P index, which does have a big part in information technology, has uh, not performed nearly as well as, as just straight IT or information technology. Um, and so on. And then you can see some of the other sectors that have been performing. You can see real estate not performing very well. Uh, you can see materials not performing quite as well. Energy not performing quite as well, but over the near term has, has actually performed pretty decent um, in the three year. So, so you get some spottiness in here. So uh, that's, that's kind of the, the general consensus here. And we get that out of that funky heat map. All right. Um, next thing. Uh, if you want to change the palette, say you don't like this color, um, there's a couple different default palettes that uh, are provided. One is greens, you can change it to greens. Um, I think reds is another one, so if we do reds, uh, try that. It turns it all to reds, and so on. Now, what I'm next going to do is, now that you understand the basics, we really want to make actually a plot that looks something like this one right here, where we've got a mixture of different palettes, we've got sectors broken out, we've got the overall market down here, and we've, we're using a mix of box uh, and the funky heat map square rectangles uh, and so on. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, it does take a little bit more work, but uh, I've already done the hard thing, uh, the hard work for you, and we're going to go through that right now. 
Okay, so in order to make a plot that looks a little bit more customized like this, uh, we have to do some things a little bit differently. Uh, there's really a, a few different things that we're going to have to mess around with. One is color palettes. Uh, we're also going to mess around with column info. Uh, and we're going to mess around with column groups. That's these things up here, these groupings. And then row info, uh, which is where we're going to add some row groups, like the sectors and the overall market. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use that same funky heat map function, but we're going to add those sections in over here. Okay, so that's the game plan. Um, the first thing is the palettes. So basically what we're doing is we're just creating a tibble here, control enter, that we're going to provide to the function that has some color palettes. So, uh, whoops, control Z, control enter. Uh, what we what we've done here is we've made a uh, tibble here that contains different color palettes. So this is a bunch of colors, it's color ramp, and this is going to be the palette greens that are going to be used here. They're just different variant co various colors of greens that the um, th that we're going to tell uh, it how to use. Uh, the next one is the palette red blue. So that's what we're seeing here, like a red for the negatives and a blue for the positives, and, and kind of white in the middle. So that's what this one is um, there. I'll just control enter this one. That's this palette here. And then there's a palette blue. Um, I think I just use that. Yeah, it's just two blue colors. I use that for, the, for this up here. Um, then what we're going to do is call them info. And what we're going to spec specify is the ID group, the name, the geom that we want to use, the palette, and then any special options. Options are going to be used to just like the width um, here. So let's open this up a little bit looks a little weird because I'm using this thing called a triple but um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have the ID column we're going to group that into a column called sectors uh, or sector uh, and then uh, we're going to give it a name so uh, the name is actually empty for all of these so that's what you see here sector is the grouping and uh, the name is blank I don't have a column name up here didn't need a column name um, and uh, geom, there's no geom. You can you can specify, I think, text as the geom if you just want to show, showcase text. Uh, and then the options, um, or no, no, excuse me, it's text is the geom here, and then palette is NA, and then this list here provides some additional options. We're uh, giving it a width equal to six and an H uh, horizontal uh, justification of zero. All right. And then you just kind of go down through and you do the same thing. So I'm giving this column name here. This is the, the uh, timestamp uh, for the last percentage change. I'm giving it the actual time point, point in time that this, uh, this column changed. And that's what's being presented right here over this column. You can see that. Uh, we're using the geom funky rectangle uh, for this column here. And that's how that works. So you can explore that. Uh, the next thing we're doing is column groups. So uh, I have uh, four different groups here. So there is a grouping called sector. That's what I'm putting here. And that's going to be this. Uh, I just gave it a gray palette. Um, and then the level name is sector. Uh, then there's short term. Uh, and that's going to use palette blue. That's this here. And it says short term and then less than three months. That's level one, level two, level one, level two. And then uh, you get the ID here. And we just did the same thing for medium term and long term. Then there's row info. So row info was used to create the sectors bucket and the overall market. So you can see sectors. And basically what we're doing is we're just specifying each of these rows here that start with this ID column. Um, you can group those into groupings. And that's what I did with the row info. And then once I'm ready, I just uh, run this last piece down here. And it creates the plot that we're seeing right over here. All right, so that's that's funky heat maps in a nutshell. Uh, learning more. So if you want to become a data science expert for your organization, and I'm talking a six-figure data scientist, that's what I specialize in training data scientists how to do. If you like the programming language R, I think the R language is the fastest language to become a data scientist, and in fact, a six-figure data scientist. So I have put together a free masterclass that is the 10 secrets to becoming a six-figure data scientist. It will help you, and it's completely free. It will help you learn the exact tools and techniques that I use in order to be able to help my career out and grow it into the six figure level. And it's the same skills that I use eventually when I got into data science consulting. And it's the same skills that I'm now teaching a whole bunch of data scientists. I'm talking 6,000 data scientists that have joined my R-Track program. 
they're learning the same skills now and they're having super successful careers. So if you want to learn that, here's a link, uh, links in the video notes uh, for the free R-Track Masterclass. All right, until next time, I'll see you soon.